Okay, now moving on to evaluating for somatic dysfunction of the wrist, we're going to be considering, uh, we, again, we can cons consider our forearm and interosseous membrane as it relates to how the wrist is going to function. Um, and in addition, we're going to focus on the carpals and then metacarpals um, and phalanges as part of the wrist and hand. Okay, so evaluating the carpals, um, we can evaluate in either pronation or supination. You're going to have better... Um, uh, palpation and contact of the carpals in pronation where your thumbs are able to be on the carpals. Um, now from here you put the wrist through uh, different ranges of motion including flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction. That's flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction. And then you would name your somatic dysfunction. So uh, um, for each of the different ranges of motion. You can name it by either uh, the type of motion that you're inducing at the wrist and hand, or you can name it by the glide of the carpal bones. So if you have a flexion dysfunction, uh, in flexion, the carpal bones are moving posteriorly, if you were re referencing them in um, anatomic position. In an extension dysfunction, the um, Carpals are moving anteriorly. In an abduction dysfunction, the carpals are moving into a medial glide. Medial glide? Oh, medial glide. <laughs> and then in um, an adduction dysfunction, the carpals are moving to a lateral glide, and you can name it by each of those dysfunctions. Okay, so moving on to the metacarpals and phalanges um, and the interphalangeal joints. Um, we could evaluate locally at each of those joints. So we would uh, monitor and contact uh, proximally at the carpals, and then we can contact each metacarpal anteriorly and posteriorly. So we can start with the, um, the, um, the first digit and then move it into um, a little bit of posterior or anterior glide, um, and then a little bit of adduction or abduction, and then we can do that to, to each of the um, metacarpals as well. And to, or we, so we can name it by um, the glide of the metacarpal proximally, or we could also name it for its direction of motion, as in flexion, extension, abduction, adduction. Or if we were naming the glide, we would name it as posterior glide for flexion, anterior glide for extension, um, medial glide for abduction, and lateral glide for adduction. So as I'm evaluating here, each of the different ranges of motion, what I'm finding is in this second digit, I have a freedom of motion in extension and a restriction in flexion. So I would name this as either an extension dysfunction, or I could also name it as um, a second digit um, uh, metacarpal uh, anterior glide dysfunction. Moving on to the phalanges, I can do the same thing using the same principles, evaluating each joint for its, um, its glide, as well as the direction of motion. So again, with flexion, I would expect posterior glide with extension, anterior glide, with adduction, that would be lateral glide, and with abduction, that would be medial glide. And I could name any joint that, has any, uh, that had any kind of dysfunction. Now, would I evaluate every single joint every single time? No, I would be directed to whichever joint um, has whatever dysfunction as was determined by my gross range of motion uh, prior to the evaluation.